build some bird houses. Um, and uh, we're going to learn a little bit about birds too. We're going to learn about some of the birds that live in our area. We're going to learn about the birds that might want to live in your birdhouse. A lot of different birds. You see the, the variety of birds? I mean, we have ducks and geese. You know, they nest on the ground. And we have other birds that like to nest in crooks of trees, uh, like robins. But there's other birds that like to nest in hollow trees and, and in hollow protected places. And those hollow protected places um, are sometimes uh, tree branches or hollow trees or dead trees that have been hollowed out by wood be woodpeckers or uh, sometimes under eaves of houses. Um, but uh, one of the things that we can do is to offer them a place to build a nest in a birdhouse that we can put in our yard. Can somebody tell me why we might want to have birds in our yard? Birds eat a lot of insects. If you have a garden in your, in your yard, the birds will go into the garden and they'll pick the insects off of your vegetables and fruits and eat them so they're not eating the food that you'd like to have in your garden. So birds are really helpful. What else? They sing songs, right? They're nice to listen to. Are they, are they nice to look at? Okay, we've got a lot of reasons why we might want to have birds in our yard. What is it that a bird wants in a birdhouse? A bird wants a place to shelter their nest so that they can raise babies in it and so that their babies feel safe and protected while they're growing up. And a bird, each kind of bird will have a different kind of place that they think is the best place for, their, for raising their babies. For instance, you'll have some birds, like a wren here, who a wren is a very small bird who likes hiding in uh, leaves of branches and bushes, and they're camouflage brown, um, and they're very agile flyers. So they like their birdhouses up in trees, um, up in the branches of a tree or something, so that, so that they've got a, a place where they can hide away with their babies in their nest. And they like to have lots of bushes around their birdhouse. But a tree swallow and an eastern bluebird, they are excellent flyers and like big open spaces. So what you've got with an eastern bluebird, a bluebird wants to have a nest house that is out in the open, out in the middle of a yard or out in the middle of a field, some place where they can look around and see that it's safe around that birdhouse. And whenever they're in the house and they're peeking out, they can look around and they see a wide open area that's all safe. When we put birdhouses in our yard, you get a house, you bring it home, you say, how do I put this up? Well, um, if you put it on a post in your yard, especially if it's a metal post, that's a safe place for a birdhouse because other creatures that might want to get into the birdhouse and harm the babies are not going to have a very easy time getting up that metal post and getting into that birdhouse. But it's okay if you don't have a metal post, if you can put it up in a tree, fasten it to a tree trunk, put it, put it on a fence post, even sometimes fasten it up under the eaves of your house. We learned a little bit about the different kinds of birds. You know, you can find out about birds that live in your yard and birds that live around us and with things like books or books from the library, the internet, and in these books you learn that there are different places that birds like to live. When a bird is looking for a good nesting place, they want to pick out a place that's nice and natural looking, that they're used to the kind of thing that they would normally nest in. Bird houses that we have here are made out of wood. And birds think that paint is kind of funny looking and smelly. So they don't like painted birdhouses. When we build the houses, if you just leave them plain raw wood without any paint, then the birds are going to like it better. Another thing that birds want to do is to keep other birds away from the nest. And if you put a little peg on the front of the birdhouse, other birds can come and sit on that peg and peek their head in there. And they might not like having the other birds peeking their head in and looking at their babies. And, 
and maybe pecking at them. So don't put a little peg on the front of your house, okay? Um, the different birdhouses that we have are made with different size holes. So the little birds, like a wren or a black-capped chickadee, has a house with a small hole so that only that size bird can get in. But a bigger bird, like a house finch or a bluebird, has a, he's a bigger bird, he needs a bigger hole, and they'll have a house with a bigger hole in it. Um, birds that are really fast and agile flyers, like a tree swallow, will have a house with a protected opening where the top of the house comes and slopes down and covers up the hole so that the tree swallow can swoop in and up underneath that roof and get in, and other birds that aren't so quick can't get in. So that's how the birds know that they've got a protected, safe place to raise their babies. When birds are getting ready to nest, the parents pick out a nesting site and they build a nest in the house. Mother bird lays the eggs and then sits on the nest and, and keeps them warm and safe. And then the baby birds uh, hatch out. When they hatch, they're so hungry. So you see a lot of activity in and out of that birdhouse when those babies are around uh, because the parents are flying back and forth with food. And as we learned from you guys, they eat bugs, they eat worms, they eat seeds. Some birds like fruit. They eat a lot of different stuff, and the parents are busy going out to the grocery store, their grocery store, which is your yard, your garden, and um, finding the food that the baby birds like. And they're raising those baby birds until their feathers grow out and they get strong enough to fly. And once the baby birds are strong enough to fly, they get ready to leave the nest and they'll learn to fly. They'll hop out of the birdhouse and the parents will teach them to fly you might see them in your yard on the ground and the parents hovering over to make sure they're okay and they're learning to fly. And uh, it's not very long. The baby birds are off flying and making their way in the world and now your nest, now your birdhouse is empty and it has an old nest in it that needs to be cleaned out. All of our birdhouse kits have a place where you can unscrew one screw and lift the lid of the birdhouse, it has a hinge on it. You clean out the old nest so that whenever the next set of birds finds the birdhouse, it's nice and empty and they can build a nice, fresh, clean nest. So that's what we want to do. We want to build a birdhouse. We want to mount it. We want to make it, put it in a safe place that's going to attract them. And we don't want to paint it and we want to clean it out after the babies have left and the nest, the house is empty. Let's learn about some of the things, some of the birds that, uh, that use these uh, bird houses that we're going to be building. Okay, first we've got the house finch and then the black-capped chickadee, the eastern bluebird, the tree swallow, and the house wren. These are all songbirds that live in our area. They like to sing pretty songs. They like to eat the seeds and the bugs that live around here. So you'll see them sometimes out in a forest preserve or in your yard or tree. And we are hoping to attract them to our yard with a, um, with a birdhouse. Jeff? Okay, house finch. That's this guy up here. He's about the size of sparrow. Looks a lot like a sparrow, except the male has a bright red crest on the top of his head and uh, chin right under here. And house finches uh, like to eat fruit. They also eat bugs. Um, they are known as um, papaya birds in Hawaii because they like to go and eat the papaya in Hawaii. So um, they'll raise a, um, a couple of young and um, it, the baby birds from a house finch nest will try to fly right away before they even have their feathers all the way out. And they'll get down out of the nest and run around on the ground and try to flap their wings. How about the next slide? Anita, can you tell us what a house finch might sound like? Here's the house finch song.
There we go. It's a quiet little bird with just a nice melodic call. Black cap chickadee. Black cap chickadee. This little guy, you've probably seen these around. Black cap chickadees stay here all winter. They don't fly away. And they'll use the, the house in the winter as shelter. So um, uh, that's one of the few birds that don't leave the area and, and fly south for, the warm, uh, for warmer weather when it turns cold here. Um, a chickadee is a, a happy little bird. It hops around quickly from branch to branch. Um, it's um, a bird that has a really good memory. It knows that it's going to be around here later in the year. And so when the food is, uh, is plentiful, it collects food and hides it in, a, in hiding places and then they'll go back later when there's less food and find those hiding places and eat that food. And they found that chickadees can remember thousands of food hiding places. So for a little bird, they're pretty smart. He has a few songs, so we'll listen to a couple different songs. Probably. Do you hear those guys in your backyard? Yes. They yeah. Make a lot of noise. They, they do. do. They're chatty little birds. Okay. Eastern bluebird. Now the eastern bluebird, this guy here, is a lot bigger bird than the uh, than the other two. Um, and this is a bird that likes to fly out in open meadows. Uh, farmers put uh, bluebird houses along the edge of their fields and pastures so that the bluebirds can fly around and catch insects in the fields and nest along the fence line. So a bluebird likes a house that's out in an open yard, maybe standing on a post. And you can set it up, mount it on top of a post or on the side of a post so it has plenty of uh, view around the, the house and make sure that it's a nice safe place to nest. Now, this is the male bluebird with the bright blue and the and the rust-colored uh, uh, chest and belly. Um, but the females are a little duller. One of the things I found out about bluebirds is that if you're up close and you, you see this bright blue, that bright blue is not always apparent if you're further away. From a distance, it looks more gray or brown, so it's kind of disguised. It's not always that bright looking. You have to get close to, to see the, the blue color. Bluebirds are just excellent at, at eating lots of bugs and things. So if you've got bluebirds in your yard, they're going to just clean up all the bugs. You won't have to worry about them. Let's see if we can get a song. Tree swallow, okay. A tree swallow is a little, it's one of the swallows or swift families. It's very fast flyer, very agile, can do a lot of acrobatic moves, likes to live near a pond or a stream or some kind of a creek. They like that. If you have something like that in, uh, near your yard, um, they'll be happy. Uh, they're the fast flying bird that likes hollow trees. And the birdhouse that we have for a tree swallow um, has the roof tilted down over the opening so that the fast and quick bird can fly up into the ho house and other birds can't get into that house. So let's see what they sound like.
go on to our littlest bird in our group today, the house wren. The house wren is a little brown bird. It's very active, bounces from branch to branch, never seems to sit still for very long. They get down on the ground and they look for seeds and things and bugs. They're up in a tree, they're over your head. They make chattering sounds. One of the things that makes um, it, you sure that you've got a house wren in your yard, if you see him sit with his tail sticking straight up in the air. They are, they are one of the few birds that have their tail sticking up quite like that. Their houses are small and they like protected underbrush and bushes and things around their house. Uh, they're one of the few houses, uh, birds that like to nest in a house that's hung below a tree branch and swinging. So if you can mount the house with a piece of picture wire, putting a couple of nails in the house and wrapping some picture wire uh, over it and then hanging it from a tree branch so that it swings a little bit, uh, house wrens like that kind of house. Most birds like to have a house that's stable. They're okay with a moving house. Let's see what they sound like, Anita. There's the house run. It's not as loud as the other birds, but if you're real quiet, you'll hear them in your backyard in a bush, all talking together. They're one of the busiest bird eaters. They'll eat practically their whole weight in insects in the course of a day. So if you can get a house wren to come to your house, you won't have bugs in your garden. You won't have bugs anywhere. They just clean them up. Okay, so guys, let's get to building. Okay. Yeah.